In this video, we're going to talk about how to take your short game to the next level so you can get more up and down more and shoot lower scores. Hey everybody, Scott Hogan coming at you here. We're in my training center again here just outside of Chicago. We're going to be talking about short game and you know how to take your short game to the next level so you can shoot lower scores, get up and down, and uh, have a lot more fun. So short game, you know, one of my favorite things, one because you know it should be something that's you know it seems so simple, but actually has a lot of intricacies to it and I like it because it has a lot of uh, you know things that you can do just little tiny changes that I can do to make the ball do this do that uh, a lot of stuff to practice and have a lot of fun with it so it's really fun to learn it once you start getting into it and then you continue on from there we're going to talk today about kind of getting you a baseline short game shot though you know what do we want to see as your go-to shot because from there, you're just going to be making those adjustments as you go along, and we'll talk more in later videos about what you can do from there. So, short game is different than it was even when I started playing. I started playing mid '90s, and you know back then, short game was you know I would never use a wedge like a lob wedge or a sand wedge. It was like an eight iron ball back in the stance, hands forward, just kind of chop down, let it run, and that was the shot you would play a lot and it's a great shot it's one that you know if you don't use you should want to do you should head over to our instagram we have a video about how to do that one but it's it's a good shot for certain situations but you're gonna if that's your go-to short game motion you're going to be very limited in what you can do you know green speeds have gotten faster the the cuts in the fairway have gotten tighter so you have a lot a lot of things that you have to deal with you know deeper bunkers things like that so you want to have a more diversified short game motion, one that can do a little bit more things. So, you know, again, that was kind of our standard back in the day was that low runner. You know, the standard now is kind of more of a mid-flight pitch that hits a couple times, it'll check, and then it'll kind of just trickle out. And that's what you'll see on tour. That's why they're getting up and down so often. And that's why I see amateurs not getting up and down so often. So let's talk about how we can do that. So. The first thing we got to do is we have to understand the wedge, all right? So the reason why sand wedges and lob wedges are so great is because of their design. So when I hold my wedge up, you're going to notice a couple of things. One, you're going to see there's a rounded edge on the back. Kind of depends on how much you have, but we call this the bounce. I have quite a bit of bounce on mine, okay? And I also have a grind on my wedge that promotes a little bit more bounce, a little bit wider sole as well. I just, that's what I like. I tend to dig into the ground a little bit. So I'm trying to get as much help to move some mass and make sure I skip across the ground. So this is the bounce on the back side. The front side, you know, right where the face comes down and meets the bottom of the club, there's an edge there. We call that the leading edge. So what do I see the difference between really good short games and the really bad short games? It's very simple. Bad short games use the leading edge. So when they come down, that club's going to dig, okay? And it's not going to want to continue on through the stroke very easily. Good short games use bounce. So when they come down, they're actually hitting the ground almost with like the back side of the wedge. Actually, if you look at contact points, you're going to see grass on that back side of the wedge. That's what they're doing because one of the things that we want to know, the first key to short game is you have to hit the ground first. You're actually trying to hit the ground first uh, if you have a good one. You're gonna let that club hit the ground just slightly behind the ball, all right? The better you are, you're gonna hit it pretty close to the ball. It'll be pretty hard to tell, but it's really gonna hit the ground first and then go from there. But because you're using the bounce, you're not gonna see much as far as dirt or anything moved, okay? so. That's the first thing we want to know is, all right, you know what? Actually, really good short games, we're actually just barely striking the ground first. You know, you can still get the ball first. You can actually get a little bit more behind the ground or, or behind the ball on the ground, and you'll still hit really good shots. So you're going to have a, a lot of room for error, which is the second key to a good short game. You need a lot of room for error, okay? The more room for error, life gets better, okay? Obviously, we'd love that on our full swing and everything too, but more room for error on your shots. So using the bounce lets us do that, okay? 
So we said, all right, we've got to use the bounce in our short game. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, there's a couple of things. First thing I want you to do is just, I want you to take your wedge, okay? So the three keys, we're gonna have three kind of keys to using bounce that we wanna do. So the first thing I want you to do is actually take your wedge, okay? And I want you to just set it down and when you actually start to close it, I want you to notice how when I close it, the leading edge actually gets more to the ground, okay? That's exactly what we don't wanna do. And if I open it, leading edge goes up, bounce of the club gets starting to get engaged. And we're starting to use that. So the first thing we have to start seeing is, okay, we need to get the face a little more open, okay? Doesn't mean you're gonna be flopping or anything like that, but we do need it a little more open. And we need to promote getting the face more open throughout our motion. So what are a couple of things, again, that can do that? So we've got three things we wanna do to promote the bounce. Well, the first one is, you're gonna be thinking about your lead wrist. So what we're gonna be doing is, we have our wrist here. And again, a lot of people, again, I was taught this too, you think, all right, stiff wrist, not gonna, not gonna move them at all. And then that's not true. What we want is actually to get into extension, okay, of our wrist. So this wrist is gonna bend backwards. You're gonna feel stretch right here. You know, it's like I'm bending back towards my watch here, okay? What that does, is opens the face. So if you think about if you're somebody that's working on a slice and you're trying to get the face shut, in a short game, you're trying to do the opposite. You're trying to get the face a little bit more open. Okay, because again, that's gonna expose the bounce. Okay, so we'd want that, all right? Now, that's not all we can do because I can get that wrist into extension, but I can still have some problems because what's gonna happen is if I just did that, that club's going to come up really steep and it's going to want to return really steep. And it's going to be hard to not get the, the leading edge engaged. So kind of our second key is we want to get the club a little bit more on a, a shallower arc or a shallower approach into the golf ball. So what do we do for that? Well, we're going to think again about our lead arm. And what we're going to think about is, if you remember our driver video, we talked about there's supination and there's pronation. What I want is pronation on my backstroke. I want pronation of my left wrist and arm. Sorry, not wrist, just your arm. You're gonna extend your wrist and I'm gonna rotate my arm. So that's gonna get the club a little bit more behind me. And when it returns, it's gonna be a little bit easier for it to be a little shallower. That's key, because I don't wanna go too sharp because I gotta be really perfect hitting the ground and the ball, and I'm gonna, or else I'm gonna chunk it, I'm gonna skull it, whatever's gonna happen. So very rarely you're gonna hit a, a good shot. And actually when you do hit the ball solidly, it's really hard to control how fast it comes off. So I like to see extension, a little rotation of, the for, of your lead forearm, and then you're in a pretty good spot to go from there, all right? So if you can do that here, here, we're ready to just take this thing down to the ball, okay? So our second key to using more bounce, getting the club a little bit more, or giving ourselves a little bit more room for air is, let's get that lead arm to rotate. We call that pronation, but just think about rotating it on the way back. Don't try to keep your arms locked and straight. That's not gonna help you. It's actually gonna cause a lot more problems. So that's our number two key. Now the third key is gonna be on the downswing, okay, or on the downstroke. So we're actually now gonna look at the, the motion going down. And again, I, I see a lot of people that will say, all right, I got a hand stiff, got to drag my hands through, no wrists. And again, that's, that's causing a problem because if I do that, let's say I did everything correct. I'm back here, I'm in a good spot, and then I'm going to lead. Look where my club comes in at. I'm so far above the golf ball that what, do I, what am I going to do to get down there? Well, I'm going to do either some last minute wrist movements to get down there. Just, it kind of freaks out and you just hit something weird. Or my body's gonna get down there. It's gonna do a lot of crazy motions that for such a slow swing and such a short swing, I mean, you don't wanna do that in a full swing anyway, but you, you definitely don't wanna do that in a short game. You wanna keep this as simple as you can, just as far as the motion. So 
what do we actually like to see? Well, we actually want our trail hand to do something. Okay, so we've talked about the left hand gets into this extension. What we actually want to do is, as we come through, just let our right hand basically throw the club. All right, so you saw in our last video, we talked about you know not flipping the club, getting your right hand to do some motion. In a full swing, that helps you not flip the club. In a shorter swing, it's gonna feel like you're flipping the club, but that's okay because when I flip, okay, I'm gonna get this back edge, again, the bounce to get to the ground, okay? And when I come through, I'm gonna be pivoting just a little bit. My goal is to keep the butt end pointed at my belly button and as close to me as I can that's comfortable, okay? So again, it's gonna be a, a little throw here and I'm gonna pivot. You can finish up nice and tall and it's just gonna be like that. Again, it's that little throw motion with your trail hand that helps. So those three keys, okay, are gonna help you get to the bounce of the wedge. Again, we wanna see it more, get it trying to promote getting it a little more open throughout the swing. So we wanna see some wrist extension, some lead arm rotation, that's on the backstroke. And then on the way down, we wanna see you throw it with your, your trail hand so you can pivot and just have the club finish nice and close to you. If you do those things, you're gonna have more success. You're gonna have a lot more room for air. You're gonna have that nice kind of mid-flight shot that actually has a little bit of check on it. You're gonna look like you really know what you're doing, but you're also gonna shoot lower scores. You're gonna have more fun and enjoy the game. So that's hopefully gonna help you with your short game. Again, thanks everybody so much for all the comments, again, on our Instagram and on YouTube for letting us know what you wanna work on. If you wanna see something, make sure you comment down below. Let us know what you wanna hear about, what tips you want. From there, again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those tips as they're coming up. We got a lot of videos coming up based on what you guys sent in. So we're really excited about that. Thanks again, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.